Hey, look what I made. And this time it actually works. So here are all the things you're gonna need. You're gonna need one of these testers, and this is the one that's Alosun EM276. And you can do all kind of the dynamic testing and everything like this for any kind of injector you want. You're gonna need something to measure and catch the fuel that you're putting through the injector. So this is just a graduated cylinder, and this one happens to go to 500 milliliters. And then to build the canister, use new galvanized stuff because if you try to use an old rusty pipe, it's gonna have old rusty crap in there and you don't want that stuff going through your injectors. This is two inch by one foot galvanized pipe. And if you go to Home Depot, they sell this by the foot. You can have them cut this for you, and if you're extra nice, they will thread it for you as well. And it's around $8 a foot. So I got a foot of this, and according to my math, the volume of this should be right around 600 something milliliters. So it's more than enough. You'll also need a couple of caps, one for each side of the cylinder, some kind of an air fitting to attach your air hose for pressure. You'll need a pressure regulator to kind of help regulate the pressure. Some sealer, Teflon sealer kind of tape stuff. And then I got this kit here that's got a lot of extra fittings in it and stuff. This is just a ball valve to shut on and shut off things that you need to be shut on and shut off. And then you need one of these guys here, one of these thingies, some of this, a couple of this kind of stuff, and one of these and a couple of those, and Bob's your uncle, and here we go. So to hook up our air fittings, we got this Y-pipe deal here, and you're gonna need a bushing that converts it from 3 8 to quarter inch, and then a quarter inch nipple. And you're gonna thread your regulator on there. And then on the other side of your regulator, you're gonna put this little quarter inch NPT 90. And then your air fitting will go on here, just like so. And then we're gonna have to drill a hole through this cap and thread that nipple into there. I might even opt for welding the nipple into this cap here. And then on top of this, this is where you're gonna put your, see we'll have to position this somewhere else like so. This is where you're gonna put your shut off valve thing here. Now you can shut this on and off so we can dump our fluid into it. That's gonna go on to that just like so. And then this is gonna go on here like so and bada bang, bada boom. Next thing you know, boom, 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 boom. And we got our thing. And then on the bottom side, we're gonna make a little adapter thing for our injector to fit into. And so the little quarter inch adapter nipple thing deal here, and I'm gonna drill this put that in there and I'll probably again opt for welding that in there so it's good and solid. All right, I got these drilled out. This one was about 11 16 5 8 kind of sorted in the middle to get that 3 8 close. And then this one for the quarter inch NPT, I drilled it out just slightly bigger than half inch. So now in order to weld on galvanize, you have to grind the galvanize off of there because if you weld to this, it might expose you to toxic fumes and this is known to cause cancer in the state of California. So make sure you're in a well ventilated area. So you can see I got my garage door open and when you're done welding it, maybe take a break, get out of the room. Definitely don't want to cause yourself any harm. All right, I got those welded up, and while those are cooling down, now is a good time to put together this little rig here with some Teflon tape. Your regulator will usually have an arrow on it or something indicating the direction of the airflow, so you want to make sure you get that going in the right direction. Of course, as I was putting this together, this cheap Hobo Fright air regulator that I had laying around that I was hoping to save some money on broke. So what did I do? Of course, I went down to Hobo Fright and got another one. So now we've got it to where we can mount it on our canister that we made. Before we do, I want to give it a cleaning with some mineral spirits just to kind of get any manufacturing oil or anything off of that. Anything I missed when I was welding it, handling it at the store. We want to keep it clean because we're putting whatever's in here through our injectors. Not a bad idea to wipe some stuff through your pipe as well. So 
So now we'll hook up the air hose and then we'll see if there's any leakage happening. Okay, I can already hear leaks. I'm just above 80 PSI. It feels like it's coming from here. Oh, yep, you can hear it. Dang it. So we know we got at least one leak here. So I'm gonna spray it down with some simple green and we'll see if we get bubbles anywhere else. No leaks there, looks like. there. See the bubbles? It's leaking from there. We got a small leak right about there. Looks like some bubbles are forming right there where this fitting is. Yeah, okay. Well, now I'm gonna do some fixing. Now there's a couple of ways you can fix this if you do find leaks. One way is just to simply snug it up more and sometimes that'll actually make it seal better. Sometimes you gotta pull the fitting off, clean it out, apply more Teflon tape and then re-tighten it. Maybe tighten it just a little bit more than you did before. But on these caps, I thought when I did this quarter inch MPT, I should weld the inside. And then on the outside here, you can see there's a little pinhole there and that's where the leak was happening. And then on the top side with the 3 8 nipple, I think my problem was I put that nipple too far down. And so when I welded, I was too far up on the threads. And now when I thread this Y fitting on there, it's not grabbing enough threads. All right, well, I welded up that little pinhole there. It's not pretty, but it works. And I welded up the inside of this bad boy. And on this one here, there was one spot right here that looked like it might have been not fully welded. So I did that and then welded the inside, cleaned it all up again. So now let's reassemble and let's try it again. There's still a leak right here at this fitting here. These fittings are all good. So probably what I'm gonna need to do is just weld this to the this. See bubbles coming up there, so this cap is also leaking. And this one is also bubbling up. I think this fitting is leaking too. Well, torque and Teflon tape is not working. Time to bust out the fire. All right, you turkey, let's see you leak now. Son of a. Finally, I got it to stop leaking, and now it's holding at 100 psi. But as I was thinking about this, I came across a little bit of a flaw in my design. In order to do the pressure test on your injectors, you gotta have a way to shut off the air supply because if the air hose is constantly hooked up to it, then your air compressor is just gonna kick on when the regulator says time to kick on, introducing more pressure into your cylinder, which kind of defeats the purpose of checking to see if there's any leakage. So I got a quarter inch ball valve. So now we can shut off the air supply and we'll be able to test the leakage based on what the reading on the gauge on the regulator says. And speaking of ball valves, you need to have a way to shut off the fluid so you can remove the injector without dumping all the fluid out. So I need to attach another ball valve to the bottom. And this time I'm not messing around. I'm gonna weld the nipple, attach the ball valve, and then weld another nipple to another coupler deal where we can make our injector adapter so now that this is all put together and we worked out all the bugs, now we need to do a leak down test. So I'm actually going to set the regulator for 80 PSI, disconnect the air hose, come back a half hour later to see if the gauge changes at all. And if there is any leakage, I'll make sure to write it down so I can compensate for that once we do our injector leak down test. All right, and a half an hour later, it didn't go down at all. I'd say the leak test was successful and the leakage is zero. So now we gotta move on to building a stand for this thing. So I raided my scrap pile and I got this thing here. This was an old hitch that was on like a tractor or something. You can also make this just out of any kind of scrap metal you have laying around or get tubes and some flat stuff from your local steel supplier. Probably cost you a few bucks. And then I've got this square tubing here. It's probably about 14 inches, give or take. So I'll just weld this square tubing to this little trailer hitch bracket thing. And then I'll clamp the cylinder to the square tubing using two four inch hose clamps, one on top and one on bottom. I think that's gonna work perfectly. I actually like this little overhang right here on the top because it'll help support the weight of the cylinder. 
And then it's not too tall, so I can still read my gauges up here. And I got room down here on the bottom for my injector to go on here for the injector adapter. So the next thing we gotta do is make our injector holder. Now obviously when you're making your injector connector, you're gonna make it custom to your particular injectors. Mine are out of a 2002 Chevy Suburban because I pulled that engine out to put it in Grampy, my 54 Bel Air. So these are the Flex Fuel Truck Injectors. The reason why I chose to go with this quarter inch coupler deal is because it's just about the right size for my particular injector to fit in, including the O-ring. And the hole on the manifold is right around 17 30 seconds. So I'm gonna drill it out and I just wanna go far enough to where I get past that O-ring. So to keep me from drilling too far, I'm gonna measure it and then put some tape on my drill bit. Just make sure you keep the drill nice and straight. I'm gonna check for any sharp shards so you don't cut your O-ring. Now before we check it, we wanna lube up this O-ring a little bit. We'll just use some William David 40. Seems like it goes in there pretty tight, but you want it tight, that's a good thing. You want that O-ring to seal good and tight. So I'm gonna use these two inch and a half by three inch plates here I got. And the idea is to sandwich the injector in between these plates using these bolts, something sort of kind of like that. But first I gotta drill some holes. All right, I got my holes drilled. This will be the top plate here. And I drilled this out to 13 16 because that'll fit over the quarter inch coupler thing I have. And then I'm gonna weld these carriage bolts on here like so. And I wanted those as far apart as possible so that they don't interfere with that graduated cylinder. And then for the bottom piece, I drilled the center hole out to 9 16 because on my particular injectors, that's what this is. It's a little oversized for this, so it'll slide through there, not including the O-ring. And then if you notice on my injectors, see how it's kind of beveled right here? If you take your step drill bit, it also has a little bit of a bevel on there. So I beveled it out going just a little bit to the next size, which in my case is 5 8 So now when we pop this through there, it centers it once we sandwich it all together. Something like that. Now we have to figure out a way to get our fluid into the cylinder from this ball valve thing. And to do that, we're gonna use a cheap old plastic funnel. So we just got one of these cheap old plastic funnels. They're like a dollar. And obviously I don't wanna hold the funnel with one hand and try to pour with the other hand. So I'm gonna try to figure out a way to thread this on there. So what I'm gonna do is apply a little bit of heat to it to kind of soften the plastic a little bit. And then as I thread it in and push it on there, it should cut new threads. Sort of worked, hopefully it won't leak. All right, now our build is complete. Now the crucial step is we need to clean this thing. So we're just gonna run some mineral spirits through here, shake it around, blow it out, probably do that a few times until we get no debris or anything in the stuff that we blow out of it. A little milky on the cloudy side, so maybe I'll run another little bit through there, see if we can get it to come out clear. Getting better, maybe one more. All right, that looks pretty good. I know it's hard to tell through this kind of cloudy cylinder, but no debris, it looks pretty good. Should we hook up a injector and test it? I think we should. All right, I got some mineral spirits in the canister and I got the air hooked up. Now this injector is a 30 something pound injector. So I got this set to about 30 PSI. I got this injector hooked up to this connector and you can buy these connectors from a junkyard for a couple of bucks. Problem is being in central Oregon, the nearest pick your part junkyard is a couple hours away. So I just opted to buy a new one on eBay. Hooked up these connectors so I can plug it into the tester and the tester is on mode four for continuous mode, hooked up to a battery. Got the graduated cylinder pretty close to the injector. It's sitting on a couple of boxes to get it up to where it needs to be. And let's just hit this pulse button and see what happens. It's working. Woohoo! What do you know? We're holding steady. Air pressure. Pretty good steady stream. Looks like it's working. Now you can test as many injectors as you want. So I hope this helped you out. If it did, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit the share button down there. Check out the socials. 
get yourself a t-shirt. We're doing a deal through 2022. Hit the subscribe button down there and I'll see you on the next one.